Thanks for joining, this is Movado and I'm back here with another Empyreon Galactic video. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the N menu in the game. That means if you press the N key on your keyboard you get this little pop-up. Uh, a lot of things you can do with this today. I'm going to try to give you a couple demonstrations or explanations on what the whole thing does. Uh, again, if you're joining the video and you do like the content, please do hit that like and subscribe button. And of course, let me know if you have any questions along the way and I'll try to try to get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, first thing on the end menu that you want to look at is at the top you've got the building and you have the debug menu. Obviously, they both have different things. They do different things. So in the building menu, I'm just going to work top top down to the bottom, starting with this undo and lock function. So undo is really simple. I place a block, and this is only going to work in creative mode. If I place a block, I hit the end button, I hit undo, it disappears. If I hit redo, it comes back. Uh, it does save quite a few of your actions. So I can just do a whole bunch of this stuff individually and just put a whole bunch of blocks down like this. And then I can go back into the end menu and I can keep hitting undo and you can see they will keep coming off. If I hit redo, I can bring them all back. So kind of as much as you want right there. Uh, the next thing is the lock. So I'm going to do something really quick. So first of all, texture gun, textures, this is a Xeno block. Down here, these little buttons, these replace mode and apply to whole block are valuable to use sometimes. I'm going to apply this to the whole block so the whole thing looks like that. Okay, now I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to get back to what I was saying before, which is the lock function. So the lock function works by pointing your cursor at another block while holding the block in your hand. So I have this block in my hand. If I press the N key and I hit lock, now every block that I place is going to be exactly the same. If I were to texture this block, I'm going to put that texture on this side, I'm going to put that texture on this side, I'm going to put this one on this side, uh, and then I take a block, and I hit the N key. I have to click it once to unlock it, click it again to relock it, but now all my blocks are going to be exactly like that one I, when I showed you. Actually, it didn't. It looks like it actually copies the one. I thought it would copy the whole block. It looks like it copies that one surface. Let me do that again. And it applies it to the whole block. So I was mistaken on that. So it copies whatever texture you're looking at and it applies it to the whole block. See now it's now it's working differently. Now I'm getting confused at how this is supposed to work. See, okay, now it is doing the whole block exactly like this when it's got the different textures on it. That was weird how it wasn't doing that before. But yeah, that is how that works. Okay. Undo the lock. Remove all these blocks. Look at that. Look at that undo. Okay. Next thing, connect to base. So this is very valuable. If you have a starter block down, obviously I can place a block right here. But what if I want to start building a platform way over here? Maybe it's like a turret or another building in my base or whatever it is. The way you do that is you don't have to build an actual connection. You can just press your N key, click connect to base, and now I'm connected to that base. Now if I come over here, I can place that block, I can place that block, I can place this block, I can place one over here. There is a certain level where you can only go so far and oh, it looks like I haven't reached it yet. Still haven't reached it. Wow, there's a really long area. There it is. So this is the edge. I can place one there, but it says too way away from the too far away from the center. Well, the center is way over here. So that's a pretty big structure. You can go that far in any direction, but that's how that block works or that selection is in the NU connect to base. Symmetry plane is interesting. Symmetry plane is something that a lot of people are going to use, especially for building lots of ships. I'm just going to build the pole up here to make it a little bit easier. Um, symmetry mode, so you have a couple different ones. What I do, let me click on symmetry mode first. The X, the, sorry, the YZ is the most common. That's the one most ships are going to be built with. Looks like I need to realign this way. So with the end menu open, you actually move the cursor around and you click. So I can click in the middle of a block. I can click on the, you know, between two blocks. Generally, you want to be in the middle of a block if you want, you know, that middle block to be 
you know, by itself. So, like, if you have a captain's chair that sits in that one block, that's how you want it. Sometimes you can build them with a the center. The symmetry plane is between two blocks. So what that means is if I remove that block, it gets removed on both sides. If I add it, it gets added on both sides. If I remove again, if I go this way and I put it in the middle of the block, every block I put out comes up on both sides. But obviously the middle one you have to do by, one by one. All right, that is symmetry plane that way. The, the Z, X, Z is the horizontal plane. So I am kind of above it. If you can, kind of, It's kind of hard to see. So in order to get this one to work, press the N key, and I'm going to click right in the middle of that block. So now I've got the, the plane is in the middle of this block, but it's also above. So if I place a block right here, you can see it also popped up on the bottom too. So one block places four. I've only built one ship using these two planes, and it was a it was a, it was a godsend. Honestly, it was super helpful to have. Uh, sometimes, if you want the top of your ship to be identical to the bottom and the left the same as the right, that can be super helpful helpful to do. Uh, and again, just like everything else, you keep placing them and they keep going. Okay, the last one, and this is one that I personally have never used, the X, Y. Um, where did that one come in? It looks like it came in back here. It did come in in the middle of a block, so that's good. So now what this is showing you is this one block right here is kind of the intersection. You got the blue, you got the green, you got the red. That means this one block is the intersecting point of all the planes. So if I put one block here... Well, it, it came up down here, it came right here, it came right here, here, and here. This is generally helpful for circular type builds, something that I'm not very good at or haven't really been attempted very well. This is really good for circular builds. So if you think about the Tesh faction in the game, uh, they're like circular kind of crazy shaped ships. That would be really good to build in this type of a plane with using all three. Um, but this is just, you know, kind of a, a left, right, top, bottom, and then front to back. That's the front to back split. I mean, if the front of your ship is going to look like the back, it'll be super helpful. So, all right, that is a symmetry plane. Next up is copy and paste. And for this, I'm just going to come up here into a ship that I'd spawn. This is my soul siphon. Um, what I'm going to do is hit your selection button. So now that we're going to do copy paste, the selection button here is what you're going to want to use. This is to move a selection. This is to scale it. You generally want to use scale. And start, and I'm going to click anywhere on the ship. It doesn't matter. From here, you'll eventually get used to it, but the reds moved it left and right. The blue moves it forward. The green moves it up and down. So basically, you can take this over your ship and do a big copy, like do a big section like that. It'll copy that entire section. One thing you want to be careful of is when you're doing copying and pasting, sometimes you don't want it to overlap or kind of overhang the edges because when you paste, it will paste this entire block or box of box. Now, let me show you what that means. So if I, let's say I cut this right now, I'm not going to actually do that. That's not the way the ship is, but let's say I cut that out and I want to move it or I want to paste it. First things first, I, I flipped it to move mode because I want to move it around. The second thing I always do is you want to hit that paste button right away. So now you've got it up. It's in move mode so you can drag it around, right? Where you have to be careful when you're doing copy paste is remember how I said you don't want to overlap too much. In this case, I have an extra block of dead space highlighted. Now if I take this and I move it back like this, when I paste this, there is nothing with this nose that's going to intersect with this ship, except the fact that this green circle, this green section was covering here. So when I hit N and I hit paste again, this whole row of blocks just disappeared. And that's because that was the, the, the area or the bounds included that area as well. So whenever you're selecting those ships, make sure you take your sliders and get them right tight in up against the edge of the ship. Whatever section you want to cut out, uh, make sure you get it right there. That should be do it right there. And then this side, you just move it in one more tick. Oh, I don't know if I had that one right. Okay, that's ultimately the way you'd want to do it. So then if I undo that paste, now I can paste it again. 
actually, let me see if, no, since I already selected it, let me go over here. Well, anyway, you get the idea. Make sure your bounds are within. I don't need to redo that. If you, if you have dead space, it's definitely going to cause some issues for you. That generally takes care of the first section. Actually, delete, you know, obviously that deletes the selection. Um, I'm not sure what remove, how that's different than delete. Oh, remove selection just removes the box. Oh, hey, look at that. I actually learned something new. I didn't know that was there. Um, saved a list. That's interesting. Replace and set selection to BP parts. I actually, you know, i got to be honest, I've never used these bottom parts before, so I can't give you a, a good uh, overview on what those two mean. Okay, let's go into the debug menu. Center of mass, uh, really helpful when you're building ships. Basically, the blue ball, let me get this straight here. The blue ball is where the theoretical center is, and the lines are where the actual center of mass is. So... In theory, if this were a perfectly optimized ship, that yellow ball would be where this blue ball is, and that would kind of be your center. Actually, right in the combat cockpit. Look, look at that. Um, but in reality, the center of mass is actually down here. Why that's relevant or why that matters is, especially when it comes to thruster placement, you want to always keep that in mind, and you always want to keep your ship somewhat balanced where that center of mass is actually in the center of your ship. You don't want the center of mass to be way in the back or way in the front or... Up high and low aren't too bad. Uh, generally, you want it somewhat close to that little blue ball there, but that's the actual one. The other thing you don't want is you don't want your ship offset. So, like, looking at the front, that's pretty well centered, pretty evenly weighted. You don't want your center of mass to be way off to one side or way off to the other because that will cause performance and agility issues. Okay. If I can get the right key here, the end key. Um... Structural integrity only applies for bases. Basically, if you turn that on, ships will always show red. Bases, it'll tell you if you're starting to get to a point. Uh, where did I put that other one? It is right behind me. There it is. You can see right here. You see those red blocks? That's telling you there's structural integrity issues. The reason there's integrity issues is, well, these blocks aren't actually attached to anything. I connect it and it turns green. If I remove it, it turns red. Uh, this is creative mode, so it's not going to actually collapse. But if you spawn this into a survival game, it would uh, it would eventually collapse on you. One thing about spawning ships in survival is that when you do that, um, it doesn't actually check structural integrity until you change the, the base. So in theory, I could spawn, and I'll spawn this really quickly here, well, as fast as the menus allow, my solar starter base. In theory, this is a space station. When it allows me to spawn it. There we go. In theory, let me get a little bit higher here. Get away. I can spawn that. Let me turn off structural. I could spawn that in a planet. And even if you play in a live playthrough, I don't recommend doing this, but even if you play in a live playthrough, it'll stay there until you change or remove a block on the ship. So if you never add a block to the structure or remove a block, it, it'll be fine. It'll actually float forever. Um, I don't recommend doing that, but, you know, that'll work. Okay. On to the last one, show oxygen. So I think show oxygen is pretty straightforward, but I'm going to go back into my soul siphon here. And, first of all, fill it with oxygen. Now, if I go inside the ship and I show oxygen, you can see all the O2 bubbles. It tells you everywhere there is oxygen. So, if for some reason you had oxygenation in one part of the ship, but then you went up somewhere else in a different room and you weren't getting oxygen up here, you know, because you didn't have a ventilator in here, uh, I think that's the only one. See, now I don't have those blue bubbles in here. But you look at everywhere else it does. So that's kind of the benefit of show oxygen. You can quickly see uh, if a room is oxygenated. The other thing that you get in this menu, so I'm going to go out of the ship. The other thing you get in this menu in the debug is show airtight blocks. Um, that's going to help you see where all the airtight blocks are in the ship. Basically turns everything green and solid. 
But the other thing that you can also do with the oxygen, I'm going to show oxygen again, and I'm going to take out this back door. Okay, right? Not airtight anymore, and now it's just updated. So if I'm in this ship, uh, eventually it should give me, let me turn that off. It should give you a red circle trail, but maybe it's not going to now because of how much shit I have in this thing. Let me take that out. Usually it gives you some black diamonds. But it doesn't seem to be wanting to do it right now. Usually it gives you black diamonds that trails you right to it. I actually use this. I wonder if it's because I'm in a planet. That might be it. Uh, kind of locked up here. Let's go. Did my game just lock? There it goes. Okay. Might be because I'm in a planet. Let me go to outer space. And I will, uh, I'll, I'll show you out here. Try to get to a section where I don't have any ships nearby. All right. Spawn a CV. Yeah, I don't know if it's this low for you all or if it's just because I have so many builds, but it always takes forever to pull up my lists. Okay. Remove those doors. Fill it all with oxygen. And remove these just to give myself some room back here. And then, there it is. It's because I was in outer space. You can see I turned it on and it gives you a trail saying, hey, the oxygen's getting out right here. You need to do something about it. So that's the other cool thing that they've added, is they don't just tell you where you do have oxygen, it also tells you where you got leaks. That is the end menu. That is, I think, everything I know. This show, this bottom part, I'm kind of intrigued about now that I've looked at it some more. Um, but hope that helps explain the end menu, everything you can do in it, all the options it gives you, and how it helps diagnose your ship. Well, that's all I got for today. If you have any questions, please do let me know. Of course, hit that like and subscribe button. Take care, everyone, and hope to see you next time. Thank you.